dear students hope you all are doing well i am dr amrit nasta and today we will be discussing a topic which is frankly speaking quite difficult one of the trickier topics from general surgery and that is pancreatic tumors so my job today is to make your life a little easy and make pancreatic tumors a little easier to understand so we can answer all the questions related to them uh please message in the chat box i can see your messages so let me know if you have any doubts this will be as usual an mcq pattern class so please feel free to ask your doubts over there and i will reply in the chat box all right those of you who are attending my class for the first time let me introduce myself and tell you a little bit about our platform so i am dr amrit nasta i am your surgery educator on the unacademy platform You can follow my profile by downloading the Unacademy Learning app, where you will get regular updates about my upcoming sessions and videos. On the Plus platform, there are some very interesting, very important batch courses which are just going to start. So there is a NEET PG Seasons batch course which is going to begin. There are going to be tests and analysis, PYQs, and there will be some grand tests. I always tell students grand tests are a must. So if you are planning to subscribe. you can use my referral code that is 10 surgery and this code will get you a 10% discount in whatever subscription plan you choose also if you are appearing next year in 2022 a comprehensive batch course is going to begin so this is for those who want a complete in depth coverage this will have all subjects covered in details with all the educators again if you wish to subscribe to plus this is my referral code that is 10 surgery there is a good news for those of you who have entered mbbs or who are within the first second third or final years there are going to be batch courses which are going to begin which will help you prepare even for your professional exams of first mbbs second mbbs third and final mbbs and they are going to cover all the subjects of each year comprehensively all right where you will be trained on how to write answers as well as some amount of conceptual coverage mcq preparation and so on so those are for those who are going to be in mbbs and on our platform there are some free grand test series which are going to happen so these are the dates this is absolutely free so you should definitely make full use of these things and this is my referral code to use that is 10 surgery all right now there is a limited time offer that is going on so if you take a 3 month subscription plan you get 1 month free if you take a 12 month subscription plan you get 2 months free you simply have to use my code that is 10 surgery this will get you to avail all of these offers as well as a discount now on our platform there are two kinds of subscriptions there is a plus subscription which gets you live classes like we are having now but with a much smaller audience so you get better interaction you get access to the batch courses the ones that i discussed as well as question bank and there is an iconic subscription plan which has benefits of plus as well as prep ladder prep ladder has recorded lectures hand written notes and much more but iconic subscription minimum duration is 1 year so it's 1 year or longer but for iconic there is a limited time subsidized subscription plan for different different durations you simply have to use my referral code that is 10 surgery all right so that is about me that is about our platform now about today's class pancreatic tumors as such is a very vast topic so i have picked the imp points the must know points the tricky points and i will try to make your life little easy about pancreatic tumors today so let's go most questions will have single best response let's start with something easy let me see how many of you can answer this mc stands for most common so what is the most common type of pancreatic neoplasm is it insulinoma cystic neoplasm adenocarcinoma or gist of pancreas so i can see your messages in the chat box let me know what you think about this these are imp topics but this is how we are going to begin right so what is the most common type let me see what answers i am getting in the chat quite a few of you are already online okay right so there were some traps in this question i am happy most of you have not fallen for the trap which is good so remember overall the most common type of pancreatic neoplasm is adenocarcinoma anybody knows what is the percentage of tumors overall 
which are adenocarcinomas and what is the most common site of adenocarcinomas of the pancreas if they asked you most common type of pancreatic endocrine tumor then the answer would obviously change if they ask you most common type of pancreatic endocrine neoplasm then the answer would be insulinoma okay i am still waiting for this answer what percentage of pancreatic tumors are adenocarcinomas yes in the chat box it is 85% so almost all the other sites are not too many most common site of course is the head of the pancreas right now how do we begin with pancreatic tumors briefly first we need to understand what are different types so you have exocrine understand pancreas is nothing but a gland it has exocrine components exocrine components means that will produce the digestive enzymes the pancreatic lipase amylase all those are the exocrine functions endocrine insulin glucagon the endocrine hormones and a third group which are called cystic neoplasms so i told you exocrine are the most common 85 percent that is going to be adenomas and adenocarcinoma then you have endocrine i told you the most common was insulinoma but there are others gastrinoma glucagonoma and so on they love asking questions on endocrine neoplasms so i have kept a few questions on them and then there are cystic neoplasms so there is a serous cystic neoplasm of pancreas mucinous cystic neoplasm and intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm broadly these are the types of cystic neoplasms all right so when we think about pancreatic cancers please do not be fixated that it is only adenocarcinoma there is adenocarcinoma there are endocrine tumors and there are cystic tumors so first get this fact clear in your head when you think about pancreatic tumors and obviously each of these tumors is going to behave very differently some are going to have functional symptoms some are going to have pressure symptoms and some are going to have no symptoms so i hope you got the gist of where i'm going to go all right now let's see if you know this so i am talking about adenocarcinoma ab aapko samjhega so all of these are associated with adenocarcinoma of pancreas except this question is directly from the textbook so this is something that you must know there is no running away from it so which of these factors is not associated now in ina cet they may give you a question and they may give you four choices 1 2 3 4 and there may be multiple correct responses okay so the question can change i am waiting for your response in the chat box yeah and i will reply also on the chat so let me know where your mind is going on these kind of questions not the kind of questions you can make a mistake in a absolutely not make a mistake in this and your rank will drop drastically because most students get these questions correct so you can't run away from them thode thode most commons are going to come not many and some except single best responses one liners are going to be there so let's be clear even though there are 200 questions aisa nahi hai that everything is going to be long clinical they may to state they may add some clinical front like they can make this question patient presented with painless progressive jaundice ct scan showed tumor mass in the head of the pancreas which of these is not a risk factor associated with the same so that will be the question it is clinical but is it really clinical no so if you know the facts if you know the theory these kind of questions are going to be bread and butter questions okay let me see i am still waiting for responses in the chat okay now let's take each option pewds jagger syndrome you know pewds jagger syndrome is a type of colonic polyposis syndromes where you have hamartomas in the intestine correct it is non neoplastic you have hamartomas but is it a risk factor for adenocarcinoma of pancreas of course it is hn pcc of course it is all colonic polyposis let's just take it for granted 
are going to be associated with adenoma, uh, adenocarcinoma of pancreas. Let's just take that as a thumb rule. Let's not have to use too much brains to remember these kind of things. Colonic polyposis, the mutations also affect pancreas. You will get them. So even if instead of HNPCC there was FAP, that would have also been yes associated. Chronic pancreatitis, this is the tricky one, but yes, it is pre-malignant. Okay. Even if you didn't know this, let's be clear. Previous ERCP, come on. ERCP having to do with adenocarcinoma of pancreas? Of course not. But yes, ERCP does have its relation with a particular pancreatic disease. Which one is that? Which disease is related or associated or believed to be caused by ERCP? Now, ERCP is a procedure. So it is a procedure related complication affecting the pancreas. Yeah, it is called ERCP induced acute pancreatitis. Okay, ERCP induced acute pancreatitis and you know acute pancreatitis can become life threatening if it is severe, which is why I always tell my students ERCP is never going to be diagnostic. There are one or two scenarios where you use it as a diagnostic test. Otherwise, ERCP is always going to be diagnostic and therapeutic. Means you should have a clue to the diagnosis, then you will go for ERCP. I have one question on ERCP also later. So, some important things about adenocarcinoma, that is the first pancreatic tumor, what we need to remember, most common type. Most common site, I already told you, is the head or you can also label as the periampillary region and in the risk factors, pancreatitis, colonic polyposis and this hereditary pancreatitis carries the maximum risk this is given in billion love so when i say hereditary it is linked with some mutations yeah what mutation is that so what all these mutations are probably responsible for you know carcinoma of pancreas chronic pancreatitis of course there are millions of causes of chronic pancreatitis Colonic polyposis syndromes, what I was telling you earlier. And the big one, I've kept it in caps, smoking. So yes, of course, smoking causes many cancers. One of them is adenocarcinoma. Smoking is not related with endocrine tumors of pancreas. Okay, so let's be very clear about that. And KRAS mutation. Aseto KRAS mutation is itself related to colonic cancers. Adenoma, carcinoma, sequence, Vogelstein, one of the steps is KRAS mutation, right? So, where you see CA colon mutation, you think of pancreatic cancers, that is one. Other is hereditary pancreatitis, ISCA mutation, SPINK mutation, right? So, these are the little, little extra things you may have learned them in pathology, but we need to know to get a good grip on these kind of topics. These are tricky topics. And even when we do study in MBBS, final MBBS, we don't put too much stress on CA pancreas. Not to say it's not a common tumor, but for an undergraduate level, little difficult. There are too many spectrum in it, too many spectra, right? So, itna hum dhyan nahi dete. But for NEET PG, for INICAT, must know topics. Because 100%, year after year, 2-3 questions come from CA pancreas. Two, three questions come. One will be exocrine or some procedure. One will be endocrine tumors. They love asking last year in NEET PG. They asked some easy questions. This time they may not. Right. So let's move on to the next question. This is an IMP question. This is absolutely new question. This has never been asked. And uh, I have taken one special class. Okay. I have taken one special class called cancer stagings in surgery, which was part one. Part 2 I am going to take in the next few days. I couldn't take it last week. So, in that part 1, I discussed quite a few cancers. If you have not seen that special class, please see it. It is a very easy, good, simple way of revising all of these topics together. Because cancer stagings, how, how many are you going to mug? Right? So, at least this way, I have discussed hepatobiliary tumors. I have discussed general surgery cancers like thyroid, breast, uh, skin cancer, melanoma. So, I have kept one staging hai, one after another. So, you can just download the PDF and you can revise. Similarly, I am going to take another special class where I am going to do GI and urological cancers. Urological cancers are a little difficult. 
each is different there is no connection so i'm going to take that in the next few days nonetheless coming to this now eighth edition of ajcc had a lot of changes in some some cancers right so one of the changes was in pancreatic cancer or pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma so according to this what is p3 or simply say t3 so you have t1 t2 t3 t4 for adenocarcinoma of pancreas what is t3 is it involvement of duodenum peripancreatic fat sma or size more than 4 cm it is unlikely that these kind of questions are going to be explored too much maybe not in neat pg but inicet they love asking hepatobiliary because the aims ke surgeons even though they are general surgeons they do a lot of gi and they have very popular gi surgery department so if they take gi surgery mcqs from them when they formulate the paper they are going to be high level and year after year the questions in aims or inicet are of high level when it comes to hepatobiliary like last year they asked about bile duct injury quite tricky questions this ke answer probably some of the answers only they know but at least such black and white questions where it is clear cut like a staging like a yes and no question we cannot make a mistake in that will be criminal if you want an awesome rank these questions have to be answered if you don't answer these many won't be able to answer this no doubt about it so i am seeing in chats answers are popping in all right so according to the 8th edition of ajcc american joint committee for cancer what is t3 now i'll tell you what is t1 for ca pancreas it is up to 2 cm tumor size t2 is 2 to 4 cm t3 erstwhile was not more than 4 cm it was more than 4 cm or involving surrounding structures which has been abandoned and t4 is involvement of unresectable surrounding structures so answer to this question t3 is size more than 4 cm so in whether it is involving peripancreatic fat or duodenum or not is not going to affect the staging staging is side size based what is t4 this also they have specified which i will show you in the next slide but the take home message in this question is t3 the mcq will only come on t3 because they know you know t1 t2 you would have mocked it or you would have figured it out but t3 is the one which is the tricky one so this is the staging according to ajcc 8 t1 t2 i already told you t3 as easy as it sounds it's simply size based and it is nothing to do with involvement of surrounding structures or resectable surrounding structures aisa kuch nahi hai that has been given up it's only according to size t4 is unique it is speaking about arterial invasion okay it is speaking about arterial invasion like superior mesenteric which supplies the pancreas celiac trunk which supplies the pancreas and common hepatic artery via gastroduodenal so it is to do with the pancreatic blood supply only arterial invasion is going to be t4 which to some extent becomes difficult to operate right now remember the same staging is not for endocrine tumor so for endocrine tumor the staging is different we don't need to know that and the end state is based on the number of nodes again not that important earlier it was n0 no regional nodes n1 regional nodes now they have made n1 n2 based on how many nodes are present in the vicinity okay but the important one the mcq point are these two t3 t4 is what we need to know okay because that will be the mcq as you clearly saw tricky mcqs not very easy to answer let's move on this is a new question okay this is imp this is from bailey and this i would label as expected for ini cet in ini cet they are very capable of putting these kind of questions frankly speaking this is high level mbbs students in fact even as general surgeons we find these topics difficult onco surgery is a difficult branch of general surgery it's a super specialty in itself 
so at least the obvious points i felt it was my duty that are there in the books because i am sure you don't have time to read bailey right now but at least from my side some topics i want to difficult topics try i'm trying to make easy that is the name of this class tumors of pancreas made easy so hopefully it will become a little easy thoda to easy hoga right so there is a typical criteria okay there is a typical criteria all of these are considered as borderline resectable pancreatic tumors borderline resectable this is a new concept when i was giving my ms exam in 2014 tab ye concept ko kuch saal hue the it had come only a few years earlier and now this concept has found its way in bailey so it is there in bailey in the chapter of pancreas so of course we need to know this borderline resectable means it may be possible to resect these pancreatic tumors except means which of these is not borderline resectable now there are two ways of looking at it when i say border it means right at the edge of good and bad correct that is the meaning of border boundary so borderline can have two meanings either it can be on the border of good or on the border of the bad side it means when i say borderline resectable except it can also mean something which is good which is not borderline resectable which is easily resectable on the other hand it can be bad means totally unresectable so i am trying to help you out over here okay don't assume that one of the options should be unresectable one of the options can be completely resectable also like a t1 tumor or a t2 tumor which is not going into any surrounding structures is also going to be not a borderline resectable it will be a completely resectable so be very vigilant when they use these kind of terminologies now the option that i have put you can make out that the correct answer is going to be unresectable but be vigilant especially in inict where there are multiple correct responses if so then a good tumor will also not be borderline resectable it will be completely resectable i hope you got what i am trying to say okay thode difficult topics hai par aaj ke baad manage ho jayenge anyways let's take each option by merit portal vein invasion smv invasion normally venous invasions do not make it unresectable so this is correct these two are borderline resectable now when i say borderline it means if it is invading the portal vein to some extent i can do a resection of the portal vein and anastomosis these are high funda surgeries that is why they are called borderline they are not clear cut resectable so portal vein smv invasion i can still manage sma invasion is unresectable and you know why this is a clear cut answer sma invasion where did we see this SMA invasion in today's class. What did it mean? Yeah, I am waiting for the answer. Also, GDA encasement. Now, just now I told you, venous invasions are borderline. Arterial invasions usually become unresectable, except gastroduodenal artery. This is the only exception. GDA encasement still keeps it somewhat borderline. You know why? Because GDA can be sacrificed. it can be sacrificed okay because gda is going to give me gastroepiploics which is okay the stomach will take care what is bothering me more is when i take care of gda the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery is going to be taken care of so gda invasion is okay still keeps it borderline sm invasion what where did we read sm invasion sm invasion yeah that was t4 tumor now come to this look at this slide sma celiac cha will usually render this tumor usually this is not for sure always unresectable anything less than that venous involvement keeps it borderline now come to what are truly borderline resectable this is given in bailey ye yes, slide is sabse important slide involvement of smv or portal vein encasement of gastroduodenal artery 
Encasement means it is surrounding, so there is a gastrodural artery, the tumor will surround it. That is the meaning of encasement. And SMA can only be aborted. Okay, only be aborted. Abort means it can just be touching or it can just be in the vicinity. It cannot not involvement or not invasion. Invasion nahi hona If SMA is invaded by the tumor, it becomes unreceptible. So as long as it is only abutting the SMA, it still remains borderline resectable. Please have a good look at these options, especially for INICET, because they are going to kill you on these kind of questions. If you can handle them, rank goes well up. If you can't handle them, it's okay. Because not many people are going to get it. This is what will differentiate the awesome ranks from the good rank. This is good to average wala question. Okay. It is not uh, good and average. It is going to be good to awesome. It will really push up your rank if you get these kind of questions correct. If you don't get them, it's okay. Let's move on. Uh, this I will go through a little quickly because this I have recently discussed in one of my earlier classes. But it is too important a topic to be ignored. So I'll quickly go through this. Which of these structures are usually resected in Whipple's for malignancy? Okay, so usually resected. It's a very classical question. You will get options like these. 20% questions will be like this because they will have PGA Chandigarh type of questions. They are going to have it for sure. So some questions you will get like this. So which of these are usually going to be resected in Whipple's or malignancy? Proximal jejunum, distal CVD, whole bladder, uncinate process of pancreas. These are the options 1 and 3, 2 and 3, 1, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4 or all are removed. Yeah, let me see what answers are there on your mind. Whipple's pay sawal ana kafi likely hai. It's a very popular topic. Mainly for INICET. Let me see what answers you are giving. And I will reply in the chat. Yeah. Okay. So, which of these are usually resected? Alright. Now, let me make your life easy. Quickly, I will tell you. Whipples me karte kya hai? And what is the other name for Whipples? What is the scientific or surgical name for Whipples? Now, whenever I say Whipples, what I mean is they may use a different terminology for Whipples, which you should know. It is pancreatico duodenectomy. Okay, so even if they use this word pancreatico duodenectomy, please don't be surprised. It means Whipples. Otherwise, I will have to say, I told you so. Okay. So I am committingly telling you from now, if you see pancreatico duodenectomy means removal of part of pancreas and removal of duodenum, it means whipples. So eyes closed, take it as whipples. Now what do I remove in whipples and why? So I have the pancreas like this. I have the duodenum. Okay, this is some amount of jejunum. Somewhere from here is going to be the gallbladder. CBD and it will join into the head of the pancreas with the pancreatic duct and into the ampulla. Now when am I doing Whipple's? I am doing it for usually periampulary tumor, head of the pancreas over here. So I am always going to remove head of the pancreas, may have to remove neck and duodenum. That is always going to take, always going to go. I have to do an onco resection means lower CBD will have to go. Now remember, since I have removed the duodenum, I have removed the ampullary sphincter. If the ampullary sphincter is gone, then what will control the gallbladder function? Please remember, gallbladder stalls the bile when the sphincter closes. So when bile is coming from the liver and the biliary tree and the sphincter closes, the bile will go and get stored into the gallbladder. Gallbladder only stores bile, it does not produce bile. If there is no ampullary sphincter, there will be no storage, there can be problems with the gallbladder, so you will always remove the gallbladder. 
दो चीजें तो क्लियर कट है पाइलोरस इज नॉट ऑलवेज रिमूव प्लीज रिमेंबर देर आर पाइलोरस प्रिजर्विंग जेजुनोस्टमी and gastrojejunostomy so the jejunum has to be taken upper upper means it is called supracolic compartment above the transverse colon there is going to be transverse colon over here between jejunum and the pancreas and the stomach so i have to actually take the jejunum across the transverse colon upper in the supracolic space that is this space and do all the anastomosis So of course, when I have to do that, I need a mobile jejunum. So to get a mobile jejunum, I resect the proximal jejunum about 10-15 centimeters. I resect till I reach mobile jejunum, and this mobile jejunum is going to be taken, and all the anastomoses are going to be done. So let's come back to the question. Proximal jejunum is going to be resected. Yes. Distal CVD. Yes. Gall bladder, yes. What is this uncinate process? Now the pancreas, the head of the pancreas, has a process like this. This over here, uncinate process. If I am removing the head, I have to remove the uncinate process. Where is it going to lie? Otherwise, it will become necrosed. Otherwise, so uncinate process is also going to be removed. Answer is all are removed. Are we very clear on this? Right. so please be very clear if they ask you what is not removed then one answer is going to be pylorus one answer is going to be common hepatic duct not always removed common hepatic duct will be removed depending on how much in the vicinity is the tumor is it in the distal cvd if it's in the distal cvd you may have to remove common hepatic duct some part what is not removed liver usually you don't have to remove liver obviously there is no connection lymph nodes are going to be removed huh? peri peri pancreatic lymph nodes are going to be removed but these structures are usually not removed the ones that i have enlisted anything comes on whipples you now you are going to be ready all right let's move on this is an interesting one this question has never been asked like this and i'll tell you what is the trickery that they do in these kind of questions a proper classical clinical question clinical image based you will find this easy now because we are doing a particular topic so you know where your mind is supposed to go but if this question comes out of the blue like if you are solving questions in psychiatry and anesthesia and uh, suddenly this question comes your mind will go to dermatology and you will think it's a dermatological disease but whenever such a thing happens and you are wondering please see what is asked have they asked you the diagnosis what have they asked you so there is a 50 year old female recently diagnosed diabetic comes with this rash on the feet okay so your mind will jump to dermatology she is also suffering from depression and she is on medications what blood investigation will you advise now if you are wondering what is the skin condition which is seen in diabetics and you probably ignored the depression part because you will be like yes most of us are depressed they have specified clinical depression most of us are not clinically depressed okay clinical depression is a different thing for which the person is under medication so they have not asked you the diagnosis you could not figure out the diagnosis then see the options the options will give you a clue you see the options you know one of the what you need to think about is endocrine tumor of pancreas so let's be smart let's not get fooled by the examiners i am thinking about endocrine tumor of pancreas 
now my mind will go the correct pathway now in my mind i will start calculating what is chromogranin a what is gastrin chromogranin a could mean non functional tumors gastrin means gastrinoma insulin means insulinoma glucagonoma so now my mind is clear that i have to think on these lines and now try to fit the scenario what is the patient having diabetes what else is the patient having depression what else is the patient having some kind of a rash dermatitis what is this equal to this is equal to glucagonin i am sure yeah absolutely right you have answered correctly this rash is called migratory necrolytic erythema dermatology mein padha hoga migratory necrolytic erythema or necrolytic erythema migrans means the same thing don't ask me how you have to identify this they will teach you in dermatology there is one more component which is missing there are four d's of glucagonoma which is the fourth one diabetes depression dermatitis and which is the fourth d i didn't put it over here this patient should be having one more feature the four d's together imply glucagonoma what is the fourth d is it diarrhea because let me tell you most of the endocrine tumors of pancreas have diarrhea most of them except glucagonoma in glucagonoma there is no diarrhea the fourth d you are absolutely right the fourth d is dbt so please be very clear this is where they will trap you this is where they will kill you they will say all of these are components of glucagonoma except one of the and you in your mind you will start counting the d's i am telling you now one of the options is going to be diarrhea and that will be the odd one out most of us will mark dvt because everybody knows dermatitis to hai diabetes bhi hai depression you will think maybe it is there your doubt will be depression dvt whichever option is there and the fourth option will be diarrhea and that will be missed so remember diarrhea is not a component so some important points that we need to know about the endocrine tumors for glucagonoma diabetes i already told you dermatitis dvt depression there is a rare tumor called vipoma vip is vasoactive intestinal peptide vasoactive intestinal peptide so the pan to the tumor produces vip it causes what is called as werner morrison syndrome or wdh syndrome diarrhea hypokalemia and achlorhydria because all those things are lost in stools potassium will be lost chlorides will be lost right so it's called pancreatic cholera and there can be incidental non functional pancreatic tumors which stain for chromogranin that was there in the option serum chromogranin a will be elevated it is seen in a lot of nets non functional tumors so these are the endocrine tumors that we need to be vigilant about isme se ek pe aayega and the other one i have put over here imp vimp if they want to ask you something simple they will ask you this answer quickly preferred surgical treatment of insulinoma so i already told you insulinoma is overall the most common endocrine tumor of pancreas overall right so what is going to be the preferred surgical treatment enucleation wide excision enucleation with lymphadenectomy wide excision with lymphadenectomy i hope you know the difference between enucleation and wide excision when there is enucleation it means simply means excision means i just remove the tumor when i say a wide excision it means i remove the tumor with some normal surrounding surrounding normal tissue that is the meaning of wide excision ब्रेस्ट में करते हैं जो बीसीटी एज अ पार्ट ऑफ बीसीटी यू डू वाइड एक्सेशन सो सिमिलरली इन पैनक्रियाटिक ट्यूमर्स और एंडोक्राइन ट्यूमर्स 
like insulinoma which is the most common one are you going to enucleate do wide excision do lymphadenectomy or not some concepts have to be clear okay answer quickly in the chat few more questions to go some imp ones so i hope till now you have understood adenocarcinoma that you will be able to handle comfortably little bit about endocrine tumors because they love asking one or two mcqs from this i have touched on some of them if you want to learn all of these topics in detail you can come for the plus courses where i have taught all of these topics in detail and there will be one question little discussion on cystic neoplasms that is again a very unexplored topic okay so i'll give the answer some of you are correct some of you are wrong answer is enucleation insulinomas are usually benign okay they are usually benign so you'll just do enucleation don't have to do lymphadenectomy are we clear all right so about insulinoma the imp points everybody knows presents with whipple stride so there will be lot of insulin production so there will be lot of hypoglycemia so person gets hypoglycemic symptoms when he fasts for a long time when you check his sugar sugar will confirm hypoglycemia and if you give him glucose it will improve that is called whipple's pride of course insulinoma will have high fasting insulin and it will have elevated c peptide c peptide is one of the breakdown products of pre insulin so insulin breaks down into active insulin and c peptide so it's a proxy marker since it is benign a lot of times you can just manage medically the drug which is used is diazoxide and where desirable if you are planning to operate since these tumors are small you and you are only going to do an enucleation you have to be sure that you have removed the tumor only so you use intraoperative ultrasound okay this is the technique of choice for localization of insulinoma you localize it intraoperatively with the help of ultrasound to be sure that this is the tumor which i am going to remove you should not end up removing pan normal pancreatic tissue because these tumors are small it's a big tumor nothing like it small tumor you may have to do this remember no lymphadenectomy okay please do not do lymphadenectomy lymphadenectomy is done in which endocrine tumor of pancreas last question of this topic for which endocrine tumor of pancreas will you have to do excision and lymphadenectomy because that tumor is usually malignant insulinoma i told you is usually benign right it's usually benign so there is a endocrine tumor of pancreas which is usually malignant in more than 50% of the cases where you will do excision with lymphadenectomy i am waiting for the answer yeah the answer is gastrinoma so for gastrinoma your answer would be excision or enucleation they will give they won't give enucleation but with lymphadenectomy excision with lymphadenectomy usme lymph node nikalne padte okay are you very clear this is my prediction for inicet inicet prediction it's a very very unexplored topic they have not asked many questions on this it's fairly untouched fairly untouched and today i will just give you one simple way to differentiate all of them now understand let's see the question first then we'll try to understand there is a female who has an incidentally diagnosed cystic lesion in the body of the pancreas okay she underwent ultrasound or ct scan for something else and a cyst was found in the body of pancreas so the surgeon said let's investigate eus was done aspiration was done and this is what they will always show you the eus aspiration findings that there is no amylase but cea is elevated cea is carcinoma embryonic antigen this lesion is likely to be 
even if this sounds a little strange you should see the options and try to match the answer you will get the answer okay you should see the options and try to get the answer so that is my take home message or take home trick trickery that we need to do when we try to solve these kind of questions which based on topics which we don't really study now before i give you the answer let us simplify this that are seen in the pancreas okay or in the vicinity of pancreas so there can be a cyst in the pancreas or there can be many cysts or there can be cysts in the vicinity of pancreas which look to be arising from pancreas so all these options are there a cyst in the vicinity is usually going to be a cyst which is due to pancreatitis so when i get pancreatitis sometimes some of the enzymes leak out and they form a cyst inflammatory cyst in the vicinity of pancreas which is called a pseudocyst now you know what a pseudocyst so a pseudocyst is an inflammatory cyst in the vicinity of pancreas it's not in the pancreas it is where the enzymes have leaked out wo to imaging mein kabhi kabhi samajh mein nahi aata that they are in or around sometimes you can't make out but usually they are in the vicinity and they are inflammatory cysts because the enzymes have leaked out that is a pseudocyst others are true cysts of pancreas which are called cystic neoplasms they are cancers or tumors let's put it as tumors so there are three kinds of cystic neoplasms of pancreas so now let's put all together so if there is a cyst cyst means fluid filled collection right fluid filled collection with some capsule so there can be four possibilities there can be a pseudocyst of pancreas which is not truly in the pancreas that's why it's pseudo it's inflammatory does not have epithelial lining or there can be serous cystic neoplasm there can be mucinous cystic neoplasm or there can be intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm how am i going to differentiate them i am going to differentiate them based on amylase in the cyst fluid and cea in the cyst fluid now pseudocyst is nothing but because of pancreatitis the enzymes have leaked out and the cyst is formed so of course it will be rich in amylase no doubt about it but it is an inflammatory cyst so tumor markers should be absent this is easy now serous cystic neoplasm it will be like this so this is the pancreas this is the pancreatic duct serous cystic neoplasm will be like this it is just a cyst usually they are benign they have that typical honeycomb appearance so because it is not containing the enzymes amylase will be negative and usually it is benign so tumor marker should be negative understand the concept then you don't have to mug anything mucinous cystic neoplasm is a serous cystic neoplasm which some mucin inside with some problem inside there has to be some problem these are usually malignant so they will be cea positive because they are malignant but there is no pancreatic enzyme so amylase should be negative they have a very typical finding which is called ovarian like stoma ovarian like stoma typical finding which you get in the aspirated fluid now intraductal neoplasms are inside the duct of the pancreas that's why they are called intraductal papillary neoplasms they have some solid component also papillary means like a tumor papilla now because they are inside the duct they will be amylase rich and they are neoplasm they are usually malignant so they will be rich in cea also so which are rich in cea these two because they are more malignant serous is benign so everything will be negative pseudo cyst i already told you it will be only amylase rich now come back to the question female 
absence of amylase means it is not pseudocyst and it is not IPMN because intraductal will also have amylase but CAA is elevated means it is malignant so it is going to be mucinous cystic neoplasms if you simply remember this slide 90% and MCQ on this topic you will be able to answer and you don't have to mock this you just have to remember the fundamentals that pseudocyst is in the vicinity it will be amylase rich it's not a tumor Serous will have nothing mucinous and IPMN are malignant usually so the tumor marker will be positive but amylase is only an IPMN because it is intraductal the enzymes are produced in the ducts or rather secreted, secreted in the ducts so the enzyme positivity will be there only in IPM. Okay, are we clear? Absolutely clear. Amazing. So that's it for this class. If you are planning to subscribe, I have taught this topic in detail on the Plus platform. You can subscribe to Plus. You just have to use my referral code that is 10 surgery. For whatever subscription plan, you will get a 10% discount. This is my Telegram channel where I post links about my upcoming classes. And this is my referral code. Do remember to like this video, do give it a thumbs up and do remember to share it with your friends. I am going to see you again for my upcoming sessions and videos. So hope you guys enjoyed this class. It's a difficult topic, no doubt, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. All right, so take care guys. Have a good day and I will see you soon.